Hey guys, Chris here. In this video, we are doing the cold weather range efficiency and charging test in the Volkswagen ID3 with the 58 kilowatt hour battery pack. I only have this car for the day, so I will only be making this video, but I will have this car again in the middle of March. So if you don't want to miss out on any of the upcoming videos, the future videos on that car and on EVs in general, please go ahead and click that subscribe button down below and also sound that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the updates. And also guys, if you like this video, if you like this type of content, the videos I make, please go ahead and click that like button, that thumbs up down below. That is much, much appreciated and it really does help me. It helped the channel a bunch and also helps YouTube to push my videos to more and more people. So thank you so much. That is so appreciated. So today's trip, we're going from Circle K here in Oslo. We're going north to Mjøstorna and then back again, 260 kilometers round trip on the motorway in the cold, minus three degrees Celsius here, three and a half degrees actually. And we should hit like minus five or six degrees Celsius when we get further north. Not the coldest, not as cold as when I have done this test in other cars, but today is supposedly the last day of cold weather before springtime is coming. So I can't wait for that. So we're gonna go to 100% tear and then we will be on our way. But lastly, guys, I have started a Patreon for people who want to support the channel. And already today, in two days it being up, we've already gotten two patrons. So thank you so much, guys. You are awesome because I do this YouTube thing almost full time next to my full time job. And I've been doing it for a while, but I can only do it for so long. So at one point, I really want to do YouTube full time and to bridge that gap, becoming a patron and supporting me really does help because at the moment I have like 14 to 16 to sometimes 18 hour working days. And I can only do that for so long before, yeah, you know, everything just crashes. You can't work 18 hour days for an extended period of time. So if you want to support the channel, if you want to help me get to that stage as quickly as possible, supporting and becoming a patron is much, much appreciated and is voluntarily. If you don't want to do it, that's totally fine. But for you guys to do, that is much, much appreciated. And also lastly, guys, I have started a merch line with the 0% state of charge logo for people who have been following the channel for a while know that I often go to 0% state to charge in the EVs. I like to push them to the max, to the extreme, so you guys don't have to. And well, sometimes it goes well. Well, so far it has gone well, except in, well, my last of this type of video with the Kia E, so check that video out. But yeah, so I thought it would be funny to do a merch line with the 0% state of charge logo. I'm waiting for my own merch. That also helps support the channel if you wanna check that out, if you wanna buy that out. So link in the description box down below. 26 minutes on the road guys you can see the conditions aren't the best we have wet roads a bit slush in the road also and we have snow in the air so not the best conditions but we do have a slight tailwind but let's take a look at our consumption so our consumption thus far is 23.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers which is quite low actually i think that is lower than we had with the kia e soul under similar conditions though with the easel we did have a headwind but yeah it will be very interesting to see what state of charge we have when we get to Brumendal to see if we can make it back and when we get back we will connect to a charger and see what kind of charging speed we get after a few hours on the road driving and if we have you know any state of charge left when we get back we're going to also calculate our theoretical range Driving along the Mjösa, it is very foggy today. You can't see anything. And also the road is very, very slushy. We have patches of snow here and there. And yeah, just slushy, slushy weather today. So this will maybe affect the consumption. That will be very interesting. But you can see thus far, our consumption is still 23.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And I want to say guys that especially compared to the Kia Isol, which I did the same exact test with just a few days ago. This is much, much quieter on the motorway. This is a very nice and silent car. So it is very nice to drive, though this is on a Continental uh, Viking Contact 7s, 215, 55, 18 inch. That is the same tire that was on the Polestar 2 I tested last week. So. 
I know that from you know data I've seen online that the uh, Vikings, Conti Vikings, are about one to two decibels quieter than the equivalent uh, Nokia Hakka Palita R3s that were on the Kia e Soul and also the Tesla Model 3 I drove recently. So that may be a reason for this uh, being more quiet, but I think in general that this is a more quiet car. We're only about 15 kilometers from our turnaround point. You can see guys that we have very snowy conditions now. It started to snow again, and then we have snow here on the road, minus four degrees Celsius. Not the coldest of conditions today. We just peaked at about minus four and a half. I don't think it's gonna get any colder. You can see our consumption has now dropped to 20. Oh, it just briefly dropped to 23 point. There, there, 23 point. Yeah, it keeps fluctuating between 23.5 and 23.4 and we can see our state to charge is 52% and we have a range of 149 kilometers to go. So it will be very interesting to see if we are above or below 50% state to charge when we get to our turnaround point and if we have more or less than 130 kilometers of range left. We are now here at our turnaround point right here by the beautiful Mjöst Torna the tallest wooden structure, wooden building in the world. This is basically a skyscraper. But let's take a look at the ID3 because I've been getting a message that adaptive cruise control isn't working. And you can see here, guys, that, um, yeah, this is fogged or snowed and iced up. So, ooh, that's cold. But I think I'm just gonna scratch away the ice here. Maybe that will work, hopefully. But you can see the front here is just full of ice and full of snow. So let's take a step inside. According to the car, we have 134 kilometers of range left, but we have spent 52% state to charge, 48% state to charge left, going 131 kilometers. So, well, there must be a buffer here. So it will be very interesting to see if we can make it back because we used 52% state to charge to get there to go 131. We have 134 kilometers of range left according to the car, uh, but only 48% state to charge. So our consumption has now dropped to 23.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which is quite low. But it will be interesting to see if the consumption drops on our way back. We are going downhill again because we are at an elevation of 100 and 34 meters so it will be interesting to see when we get back to sea level but we do have a slight headwind also according to the car we don't have enough juice to get back to circle k in food set it's around 65 kilometers to go and we only have around 31 kilometers of range according to the car we are at 12 percent state to charge and our consumption guys has now climbed to 24 0.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So that is our headwind for us. So I checked uh, for, you know, possible uh, charging stations and I want to go as far as possible. And there is one at McDonald's uh, Gardermoen right outside of the airport, not far from the airport, where they have four 225 kilowatt chargers. So we're gonna stop there. It will be very interesting to check that place out because I have never charged or stopped there before. Okay guys, 0% state of charge, zero kilometers of range left according to the car. We just got a message up on the screen here saying, car is empty, please charge. And that is in time because this is our exit. And at 1% state of charge guys, uh, the car started blowing cold air, so it automatically turned off the heater. But yeah, we're here. But yeah, unlike with the Kia, uh, ESO, we don't have any, or we might have a power limit. I'm just cruising here on the motorway. But where do we have this charging station here? Where is this? Maybe, oh, here, over here. Over here they are. Let's see if we can do this. Okay, okay, okay. There we go. Okay. Now, let's see. So a ton of snow here. Not the best. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this up here and connect. So this car doesn't have a kilowatt readout, so we will have to check the actual charger here to see. Ah, okay. And then choose. Yes, okay. Interesting. So let's see what kind of speed we do get. This car does have a claimed uh, maximum charging speed of 100 and 100 kilowatts. 
But let's see. Do we have any problems with initiating? And there is a Model 3 connected here, but it should, you know, divide the charge, hopefully. And let's see, okay, 91 kilowatts, that's not bad. 91 kilowatts, 0% state of charge, as you guys can see there. 92 kilowatts, yeah, that isn't bad. Hmm. 80 minutes to fully charged, 93 kilowatts. Okay, now it is climbing in state to charge. Almost delivered one kilowatt already. Mm, too bad I don't have this car for, uh, let's see, where are this one? We're charging quicker than that uh, Model 3. Okay, so it's showing us uh, the screen here. Look at this guys, we are almost at peak speed. We are almost at peak speed, 96 kilowatts. Wow, this is impressive. In the cold, few hours of driving, 97, wow, will we go up to 100? 97. Yeah, it just keeps climbing. 98, come on, 98, 98. 100. Okay, 100.3, 100.4. Seems like we're peaking at that speed, but that is impressive. So I'm going to go in the car again and then we'll check the state to charge at, uh, or the speed at 10, uh, 15 or 20% state to charge. This car does lack a kilowatt readout, but it has something interesting uh, with this uh, minute per kilometer readout. So seven kilometers per minute is our current charging speed, which is more useful than, you know, kilometers per hour, because if you're in a rush, if you only need to go, you know, an X amount of kilometers, say you want to go 30 kilometers, that's very easy to calculate. So you have to, you know, charge for a little more than four minutes, but let, let's go out and see what that equates to. Seven kilometers per hour because that will, you know, give us also an indication of the actual charging speed. So yeah, that does equate to this charging speed here of 100.3, 100.4 kilowatts, which is the maximum charging speed. That is impressive. I have not gotten the maximum claim charging speed out of any of the cars I have tested on this test. I mean, right out of the box, without doing any yo-yo driving, without any doing doing anything, not even my Audi e-tron. So I am super impressed by this. 30% state to charge. We are almost still getting the maximum charging speed, 98.8. Yeah. Okay, 37% state to charge. We do seem to be throttling somewhat, but we are still charging at 88.7 kilowatts. Yeah, slowly it is throttling now. I think at around 40% state to charge, it really should, uh, you know, uh, dip. But this really isn't, you know, a test of uh, the charge curve, rather a test to see how close to that, uh, you know, uh, claim charging speed we do get. And with this ID3, we are getting all our money's worth. Look at this guys, 40% state to charge soon, and we're still charging at 80, yeah, 85 kilowatts at 40% state to charge. Okay, we're gonna do one last check at 50% state to charge, guys. Last charging update, guys, 60% state to charge. We are charging at just above 60 kilowatts. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm impressed by the charging speed of this uh, car. So we're gonna take a look at the consumption, the range we got, and I just want to note out that we do not have the aerodynamic wheels on this car. These are some aftermarket um, uh, winter tires, winter wheels. So yeah, we're going to look at the data now and then uh, conclude the video. 
it's time to look at the data and come to a conclusion. We drove 227 kilometers today. We went from 100 to 0% state to charge. You guys saw that when we arrived here, we had 0% state to charge left and zero kilometers of range left according to the car. And also my calculations were telling me that, well, I had to just trust that number and stop here at this station. So if we look at the consumption data today, which was 24.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, and then we take the battery capacity, which is 58 kilowatt hours net. We take the consumption divided by the battery pack. We get a theoretical range of 235 kilometers, but it isn't that easy because especially going on a motorway, we have heat loss. Heat generated within the battery just, just dissipated out to the elements into the car and not really used for forward propulsion. So we have to calculate that because that isn't calculated by the car's consumption. And going on a motorway, I would guesstimate that this car has somewhere in the ballpark of two to 3% in heat loss. So if we subtract about 3%, giving us a small safety buffer, that gives us a theoretical range of 228 kilometers, which is basically in line with the 227 we did today. So 24.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers isn't that bad considering the conditions we had today. I mean, we had slushy, wet roads and snowy roads, and it was even snowing outside. So compared to the run I did with the Tesla Model 3, even though it was colder on that day, the conditions were much nicer. That car did something like 20.2. And also the Kia Isol under thermal conditions had higher consumption than this car. So that isn't bad. I'm, I'm very curious to see how far this car can go with the 77 kilowatt hour battery pack when that comes in the future. But still, it, it, it's good, it's good. I, I'm not, I'm uh, impressed by the consumption today considering the, uh, the uh, conditions. But what really impresses me is the speed we got while connecting to a charger. We basically off the bat, and you guys saw this, got maximum charging speed and we just stayed there until almost 50% stayed to charge. Start throttling at, I mean, it started throttling a little at like 38% uh, stayed to charge, but up to 50 where we were getting like plus 90 kilowatts of charging speed. So that was super, super impressive. Getting that close to the claim charging speed and it being a flat curve of 100 kilowatts from zero to 40% state to charge. That is super, super impressive. And even at 60, percent state to charge we were still charging at 60 kilowatts so this being that close to the claim charging speed yeah I'm, I'm impressed and I can't wait to have this car again next week to do all my standard tests so guys let me know what you think about the ID3 and how it performed today did it perform better or did it perform worse and are you considering this car after watching this video or did you uh, you know take this car off your list after watching this video i'm very curious to know let me know in the comments down below so guys i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did please drop me a thumbs up down below and for more car content as always guys please subscribe see you guys there and goodbye